Good evening, everybody. I hope you're all having a fabulous week. As always, I'm Martin Sharp, Water Speaker, Coach, Mentor, and today I'm joined with Alex on the first of our talking business. So, Alex, you want to give us a quick introduction? Who are you and what do you do? Hello there. So, my name is Alex, as you've all just heard. Um, I'm striving to be an inspirational speaker. Um, I'm a property investor right now, um, yeah, and I coach as well. Excellent. Fantastic news. Now, one thing, guys, uh, just to make sure that everything is working with this session, please give us likes and thumbs up just to make sure you can hear us, hear me and hear Alex. And then we'll uh, definitely make sure we go forward. Also, if you have any questions as we're going through this, then please feel free to post them in the window. And what we'll do is as we get towards the end of this interview, we'll bring some of those questions up and uh, we'll, we'll ask Alex if he's willing to speak about them. Excellent. So, without further ado, one of the things we're going to talk about today, Alex, was all around um, perseverance and on consistency, because those have been like two of the big things that you've been doing with your business and also with your life that's kind of made some massive differences. So, when, when did that kind of really start with you, that you realised you had to make those changes? Well, it's perseverance and belief. You know, I think the belief part is really, really important. Having belief and perseverance at the same time, I mean, it's okay to have belief, but depending on what you're facing it can be it can be a difficult long time you need to have perseverance as well as belief you know um so yeah belief and perseverance that started for me i would say about eight years ago um i was uh, clinically obese i was 35 my 35 percent body fat although i didn't look like it you know with the clothes off it was a mess <laughs> um and you know i decided that i was going to become an underwear model so I had to spend like a full year of, you know, training like an athlete and uh, eating, you know, basically you know, rabbit food. Um, and it was, it worked, you know, but I had to spend that full year of, you know, regimented up at, in bed for 10, up at half five, training in the morning, training in the afternoon, eating a certain way for a whole year, you know, um, that was where it started for me, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, and I know that's a, quite a, a grueling regime. So really, that kind of built uh, that piece of consistency really being around that, uh, being having that kind of real structure. I can see that coming out from what you've said there. So how did the perseverance come into it? What 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 was the kind of some of the key challenges you were finding? Well, I mean, as you can imagine, it's like a complete overhaul of your life. So you're changing your diet, and you're changing your whole lifestyle. So. Um, you know, there, there, there were times throughout you know, that whole year where I had the opportunity to, to go out with my friends, say for instance, and drink again and do what I had to do. Um, and I, I chose not to. And there, there were times when I really wanted to eat that junk food and I didn't. But there's only, as I learned, there's only so much willpower people have. Luckily for me, I'm one of those, I think there's like a certain very, very small percentage of the population that can do things purely on willpower. And I think I was luckily that I fall into that category. Um, but even then I was waning, you know, but I just had to continue to persevere and keep going and keep going and keep going no matter you know, what I was faced with. Mm. Even when I was in, for instance, you know, I did face a couple of injuries. It was really disheartening because I was starting starting to see really great progress. But you know, they just you know, have to stick with the plan and persevere to get to the, you know, what your goal is. Yeah, and I was kind of thinking, this sounds like you had some quite challenging moments, those, those almost being tested effectively to see how you were going to uh, get through that with regards to your friends inviting you out for drinks and stuff. Um, obviously, you were saying you based a lot of things on willpower. Was it purely willpower or was it kind of setting that real key goal of doing the underwear model that really kind of championed you? I think it was a mixture of both, to be honest. Well, I think I set the goal, you know, I don't want to go to off topic here, you know, but you know, I set the goal because I knew that I was capable of, of being that man, that person. And I felt like I was letting myself down by being in the shape that I was in. Um, so setting the goal, I mean, I, I kinda need to stay off topic, off topic here a little bit. Setting the goal, you know, was based around me proving that I was better and good enough. And that all stems back to my childhood, you know, with my relationship with my mother. We'll not go into that just now, though. But setting that goal was, was me having to prove to everyone, look, I told you that I was good enough. You know, I am good enough. Um, so that was like a really deep driver for me, you know, to, to keep going because there was people in my life that I wanted to prove wrong. 
but you know, ultimately, that's a very unhealthy mindset to work from, which mm. I found out and, and I eventually reversed. But that's a whole other, other chapter of <laughs> Maybe we'll go through that more another day. Um, so obviously you've gone through this process, you've got this consistency now in, in, in what you've been doing, your actions, and you've got yourself to the point where you, you have built this nice regime that you're going through. How did it feel when you actually uh, became an underwear model and you kind of we, we, you saw yourself for the first time in photographs? Well, I mean, if I'm being honest, mate, it wasn't, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. But again, that's because I had an unhealthy mindset. Mm -hmm. So for that whole year, I think the number one thing that I learned was self-love is key. You have to love yourself no matter what. Mm. And I, I disliked myself on a deep, profound level, which led to a lot of other unhealthy habits that I had being part of my life as well, which mm. led to being very sick afterwards. But yeah, so I, I felt a little bit, a lot depressed really, because I, when I looked in the mirror, all I could see what, what was what, what wasn't perfect. And everyone else was seeing this amazing transformation. Mm. You know, and after a few months, I could look at the pictures and I was, and I, I would look and think, I look fantastic there. Why couldn't I see that, you know, a couple of months ago? Mm. So, yeah, um, it was disheartening. But then I had to learn why that was the case, which I did. You know, would you like me to elaborate on that? Yeah, you can, because I think this whole idea of continuous improvement is quite important, whether whether you like, do this for your personal self or in your business. Um, yeah. And I think it's a real key aspect that you can you start to bring up here. So, yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, so, for, for that whole year, what I was basically telling myself was is that, you know, I'll be happy when I have the perfect six pack or I have, I've done my underwear model and shoot. So, you know, consciously, I know when I want to be happy. And when I've achieved this certain thing in the future, this goal that I'm setting myself, I'll be happy when I've achieved this goal. But, you know, on a neurological level, that doesn't work like that. You know, you, your brain is, all your brain knows then is that you're creating a neural pathway in your brain that says, I will be happy in the future. Mm. And that's all, it doesn't know what the point in the future that you'll be happy. It just knows that you want to be happy in the future. So when you get to the, point that you consciously think you should be happy, you've taught your brain to find happiness in the future. So then, you know, you, you don't feel as happy. It's almost like a, an anti-climax. Couple that with the fact that you've been looking in the mirror the whole time and seeing nothing but what's not perfect. You're trying to find what's not perfect and your brain's trying to find happiness in the future. It's a recipe for disaster. You yeah. Know? And so yeah, the number one thing I would suggest, I would, I would, you know, that I learned that I want to you know, and part of that wisdom is that self-love is key and you have to find happiness in the moment right mm. now because all we ever have is the present moment. That's all we ever have. Um, but always strive to be your best version. Strive to achieve your goals, but be happy where you are and, and who you are in that moment. Yeah, absolutely. Be happy in the journey because uh, at the end of the day, you know, that's that's what you're going to be living through most of the time. You know, yeah. Yeah, Otherwise, just living in a moment they can never achieve. So it's great to hear this actually, because again, it's one of those kind of life skills that so many people have to learn. You, and you come across many people in life that just haven't, and you're kind of wishing you could kind of impart that knowledge on them, but sometimes they've got to live through it themselves to experience it. Is that something that you'd kind of seen or understood, or have you got a different take on that? Yeah, I mean, I think I think most people, I think just from a societal point of view, people are taught to you know, set goals and, and you know, Tell themselves they'll be happy when you know. I think it's a it's a way of teaching us to be consumers, really, isn't it? Mm. Uh, but, you know, once I went through the process and then learned why I was feeling that way, and then reversed the process. You know, when I when I point it out to people now, you know, they go, "Oh, it's like an aha moment." They go, "All oh, right, okay, all right, I know what you mean." Because I'm able to really deeply understand it, and because I have passion when I'm talking about it, because I've really been through the mill with it, people when they pay attention. They go, "All oh, right, okay, this guy's." really trying to help me here mm. um, too much sometimes <laughs> i can appreciate that so that, those skills you kind of learn obviously those have now transferred quite nicely into how you've built your business so do you want to give everybody a little bit of an understanding about what your business is and uh, it's like maybe one of the key projects you're working on at the moment yeah so um, i'm a property investor um 
and yeah, so obviously that that whole year, you know, they built a lot of belief. I mean, obviously, I did achieve what I achieved the goal. So mm. like masses of masses of perseverance. But after that year, I became extremely unwell, and I spent like seven years overcoming serious illness, and that was an even tougher journey every minute of every day was a battle. So having that belief and perseverance was built over those years, and that's now transferred into my business. So I started becoming a property investor about three years ago, um, and it was, it's been a turbulent journey so far. The first flip that I did, we lost money on. Um, the second flip we did, sorry, I mean, there's more to this story, but the first flip we made money and then that buyer fell through, and we had to sell it for less, I mean, we lost money, and then we got the second flip, and then that didn't work out, and then we, we persevered with that one, no, because we thought we really want to do this, but mm. you know, it was four months overdue, and then we done that, and then eventually we didn't really make any money out of that. But all the time, you know, we, we knew we were destined for big things in the industry, so we just kept moving forward and moving forward and moving forward, and we were working on a much bigger deal, which is mm-hmm. a development. Um, so the, the deal was working out quite nicely at the beginning of last year, and then it came to, we had, we had an investor, we, we got the deal, found an investor, he was on board, then we got a down valuation, which meant we had to get more money. Mm. And we were scrambling to get more money for the completion date that we had set. We eventually found another investor, and the day that he came on board, the following day, the original investor pulled out. Oh. So we had to spend that money. And then we convinced this new investor to, to invest more money. But then we'd set like a massive state of completion date. We breached that date because um, because of the down valuation, so we were paying like penalty fees of like £100 a day. Um, well, we had no money because we never made any money off the flips. You know, we'd, we'd lost money and then kind of broke even. Um, and then we just kept going through the problems with banks. So banks were, we could we'll, we'll lend you the money. And then we'd come to completion day and then they would change the goalposts. We couldn't do that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I actually have not got a chance, had a chance to like, sit down and write down everything that went on. But that was about a third of the problems that we faced. Yeah. But because, because of that belief and perseverance, of like we're destined for bigger things here. We just kept moving forward and because we kept moving forward and taking action, solutions to the problems always presenting themselves. Yeah. Even at the last hour. We came at one point when the, the seller had he was basically saying, look, if you don't have this by four o'clock today, I'm terminating the missives. And we didn't give up and we got it at three and we got our call by three forty five. So then his lawyers had instructions to terminate the missives at four. He got it at three forty-five, then called his lawyer and said, Don't terminate the missives. And that was all because we believed, whereas most people would have given up when the first original investor had pulled out. But we didn't. So yeah, if I could tell you everything that happened, you would like I don't know. <laughs> much more happened, you know, banks pulling out and then you know the, the, the seller was very unreasonable and he was doing things that he shouldn't be doing. Oh, it was mayhem, but the belief and perseverance got us through in the end. And now that he was completed, we're now working on it. And I just had a, a meeting today with the architects and we're managing to add more money to the gross development value by increasing the amount of bedrooms that we have in each flat that we're building. So, you know, the belief and perseverance has paid off. Oh, fantastic. And uh, again, there's lots of other great learnings just straight out of that story. The fact that uh, uh, you kind of hit these these two initial problems, but you kind of carried on through them with the two, first two flips, uh, where you, you didn't make money on buying it, doing it up and selling it effectively. Um, but you've kind of, I'm guessing that was a great learning journey, because even though things may not have turned out the way you expected them to, it kind of set you up uh, with all the knowledge you needed to then get further successes down the line. Yeah, definitely. I definitely did. You know, it was the. I mean, every time, it was like it was like a body blow. It was like really a real gut punch, you know. Mm. But I just believed. You know, it's like I had belief. I'm like I'm just I just believe in myself, and I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to keep keep taking the right action that I feel that I need to take, and I know that it will work out in the way that it's meant to. And that takes me on to something you and I were talking about: is that. As much as you possibly can, I think you need to have freedom from outcome. You know, I think I think you need to enjoy in the action that you're taking. You need to desire a certain outcome, but just have unwavering belief 
whether you want to believe in the universe or God, you know, these are things that I believe in, but, you know, some people don't. But just believe in you. Believe, have that unwavering belief that as long as you take that action that feels right in your heart, then the right thing will happen for you in the future. It might not be the thing you're quite desiring right now, but just know that it will work out. And just keep moving forward and and it will will work out. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of the uh, the old parable, isn't it, where, uh, see if I remember it, um, so the the guy who's uh, walking across a war zone, he goes, uh, he goes, oh God, come on, gotta help me. And anyway, this this, this this troops come across, and he says, oh, we're here to save you. And he says, oh no, 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 God's gonna save me. It's fine. And he keeps walking, and the helicopter comes down. And he says, oh, we're here to save you. And he says, oh no, no, God's gonna save me. I'll be fine. And he keeps walking, and uh, he gets blown up by a landmine. Anyway, he's there at the pearly gates. He's speaking to God, and God says, what were you doing? You know, I sent you a set of troops. I sent you a helicopter. What else did you want? So I think uh, sometimes, yeah, you need to have that absolute belief in yourself, uh, but also then recognise that actually the answer that's uh, going to come to you is not always the one that you think it's going to be. Uh, and, and, and again, change the outcomes, because the outcomes aren't necessarily always going to be bad. I mean, it's great that you've been able to find this opportunity to add another flat into this development and make uh, even more on your gross profit there, because uh, that's something that many people are probably wouldn't do. They'll probably stick to their original plan. They won't look for that kind of continuous improvement opportunity uh, and then take advantage of what you've got there. Yeah, definitely. You know, taking it back, you know, having that mindset of always looking for opportunity, you know, I think that was that was cultivated during the tough times when we had to find the opportunity to overcome that obstacle you know so now it's just like it's ingrained in us to be like looking for ways to be better or ways to improve it just happens naturally now because we continually moved forward and each obstacle forced us to think outside the box and really just try things that weren't comfortable at all but you know um, now that's in us we are developing more opportunities now um, and yeah, things are, the opportunities are starting to fall on our lap now. Like for instance, the commercial unit, which is part of the development, just because we are ingrained to find these opportunities, someone overheard us speaking and he said, you know, I know someone that might want to take that commercial unit on. And it was like a, it was a Costa Coffee, which mm. is the best tenant you can get, one of anyway. And he made the phone call for us. It turned out that they're not looking to, you know, move into that area. But, you know, the fact that we were, looking for more opportunity to, to expand everything led to him hearing us speaking about that and then it could lead to another opportunity whereas if we just kept our mouth shut and went oh yeah that looks good and that would never have aspired, transpired you know so yeah yeah so it's kind of like put, putting it out there and then you start to recognize it a bit like uh, buying a red car and everyone suddenly everyone else is suddenly driving red cars so yeah no i like it. it's a cool idea uh, and obviously this this kind of again the theme behind uh, not only what you did with your your kind of personal transformation but also what you've been doing around your business as well has all been this this kind of constant action that you've had behind it as well so uh, when you think about the kind of actions that you put in a place do you have any kind of plans or to do's or, or how do you kind of manage that on a day-to-day basis how do I manage it um, there's so much that I'm actually into towards right now um, I manage it by having like a real strong definition of what, what it is I want to be in life you know so you know, one of my main goals in life is to be an inspirational figure around the world and the area that I would like to be known for is, is, is health and wealth you know um, and when it comes to health you know like you know, I go to bed at 10 p.m., I rise at 5.30, I do breathing exercises every day. Um, you know, I drink a certain amount of water, a certain type of water, I eat certain foods, I go to the gym, all these things take a lot of time. And, I'm, and I manage the reason I'm able to incorporate all that into being a property developer and doing all these things and is because I have a strong why, I have a strong purpose, a strong definition of what it is or why I'm here and what I'm destined to be. Mm-hmm. So, um, to that's kind of what drives me to continue to take all these actions and I've been doing it for so long now that it doesn't feel like I'm doing anything I shouldn't be doing it just feels like part of me now yeah so it might sound like a lot to other people but it, it doesn't even I don't it doesn't even enter my thought process that I'm taking a lot of action it just it's just the way it is you know yeah so having a strong a strong definition of your purpose in life I would say is, is key to having because people think taking a lot of action and doing all these this work is depleting but if it's to serve a higher purpose then it, it gives you more energy it, may, it actually mm. energizes me that way you know so 
Yeah, a strong definition of your purpose, I think, would be number one um, suggestion I would make. And then just really, you know, the kind of the, the, the mechanical stuff, like having like a planner, you know, I do it this, this time and that at that time. But I think that is, I think everyone knows how to do that. I think I think he is, is to have that strong definition of I am mm-hmm. X and I need to be X and having, you know, emotion behind it. Yeah. Brilliant, excellent. And, and it's interesting you think that everyone kind of does these things. It's a, a really easy trap to fall into. I do it all the time, unfortunately. And uh, it's amazing, actually, how many people don't. And even some of the most simplest of things uh, that we, some of us take for granted uh, can be revolutionary for other people in, in the way that they actually think and do and kind of ma- and maintain things and go through, push things forward. So, yeah, yeah, fabulous. Well, on that note, we also, you know, to give you a definition of what I do, is like I'll set monthly goals, weekly goals, mm-hmm. work towards them on a weekly, from a weekly basis rather than a, a to-do list basis. So you have your strong definition of who you are and what you want to do, and then you say, okay, I want, this is the actions that I need to take to achieve these goals over the next year. Mm-hmm. And you just break that back down to month and week, and it's a week that I, I set my my schedule up on over a week. Mm-hmm. And if you know, anything important interrupts that, then you know, I can make a conscious choice to see, okay, I wouldn't write my book for the next four hours because I have to deal with this. But generally, you know, the thing that I get each year called a passion planner mm. and it gives you a time slot. No, I got it here. here? No, it's not right. <laughs> um, like 36, 637, mm. all the way down, you know, for your whole day. And, you know, at the right, the, on the left hand side, you've got, you know, um, what, who you are and, you know, what you want to achieve. You know, yep. so you're going to be able Father, you know, a businessman, a speaker. So what we're going to do to be a good father this week, I'll spend this time with, you know, my daughter, I'll spend this time with my mum or whatever, you know. Um, so that's kind of the way I do it. Um, but it's, it's more like on a weekly basis. I plan ahead based on who I want to be rather than just having a to-do list and then letting the day run me. I try and run yeah. the day. Definitely. Definitely a good idea. Make sure you, you maximise the day, seize the day. Definitely. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, let's have a look, see if we've got any questions that have come up through the um, Facebook group. No, I think everyone's been quite quiet, but it's great to see so many of you guys on there. Uh, Davey, Frank, Janine, Dinita, Colin, James, Kerry. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you guys have really enjoyed listening to Alex and uh, how he's kind of used perseverance, consistency to really propel himself and also his business forwards. And it's also great to hear some of those kind of other elements come out of there, such as continuous improvement, taking action, and, and really um, having that clear belief in yourself and in what you're going to stand for and what you're going to do. So, Alex, do you have any parting words of wisdom before we call it a night? Uh, just believe in yourself. Believe in yourself and cultivate self-love. If you do both of those things, I guarantee you, you'll be everything you want to be in life. Excellent. Well, once again, thank you very much for your time, Alex. It's been a pleasure having you uh, on the call. And obviously, you're the first of our talking business. Uh, the opportunity is there for any of you guys, if you'd like to jump on, uh, do a bit of an interview, just su- something about your speciality of your subject, then quite quite welcome to get you on board here. Also, remember, we're going to be having the expert view as well. So if you've got a business where you want to share an idea, or maybe you even just want to explore doing a live video, uh, um, about what you what you do and what your passion is, then please feel free to use this platform to, to make that happen and let's uh, see how we can propel your businesses further forward to be growing, profitable and sustainable businesses. And that's it. Good night from Martin Sharp and good night from Alex. Okay. okay. I will click this one across and we will call a night. I should get better at this. I need to get better at this. <laughs> good night. <laughs> I need to get better at getting interviewed as well. <laughs>